Let us build a house where love can dwell and all can safely live. A place where saints and children tell how hearts learn to forgive. Build the hopes and dreams and visions, rock of faith and vault of grace. Here the love of Christ shall end divisions. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where prophets speak and words are strong and true. Where all the children dare to see, to dream lost rain on you. Be the cross that stands and with this, and a symbol of God's grace. Here is why we claim the faith of Jesus. All are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome in this place. Let us build a house where love is found in most of wine and Peace and justice meet. Be the love of God through Jesus is revealed in time and space. As we share in Christ the peace that frees us, all are welcome, all are welcome, all are welcome. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We're still with you. Good morning, everyone. I am Reverend Jeremy Kim, a minister of Uniting Church in Australia. And I'd like to welcome all of you to this third Sunday of Easter, 26th of April. 2020. We are so grateful for this opportunity as we join together as again in worship, not only in Sony Hillcrest Uniting Church, but also with the whole Christian communities across the world. Now, I'd like to ask you to pause and praise in a brief silence that God will help us to be connected to each other in this prayer, not just through the internet, but more also through the Holy Spirit. So let us pray in silence. Eternal God, Lord of heaven and earth, we praise you for your greatness. Your wisdom is seen in all your works. Your grace and truth are revealed in Jesus Christ, your Son. Your presence and power are given to us through the Holy Spirit. Therefore, bless the Trinity. We worship and adore you forever and ever. Amen. You might remember the first words coming from Jesus toward the disciples in the upper room was, Peace be with you. I'd like to exchange the same greeting with you. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Today's reading is from Luke chapter 24, verses 13 to 35. 
and it's entitled On the Road to Emmaus. On that same day, two of Jesus' followers were going to a village named Emmaus, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking to each other about all the things that had happened. As they talked and discussed, Jesus himself drew near and walked along with them. They saw him, but somehow did not recognise him. Jesus said to them, What are you talking about to each other as you walk along? They stood still with sad faces. One of them, named Cleopas, asked him, Are you the only visitor in Jerusalem who doesn't know the things that have been happening there these last few days? What things, he asked. The things that happened to Jesus of Nazareth, they answered. This man was a prophet and was considered by God and by all the people to be powerful in everything he said and did. Our chief priests and rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death, and he was crucified. And we had hoped that he would be the one who was going to set Israel free. Besides all that, this is now the third day since it happened. Some of the women of our group surprised us. They went at dawn to the tomb, but could not find his body. They came back, saying that they had seen a vision of angels who told them that he is alive. Some of our group went to the tomb and found it exactly as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then Jesus said to them, How foolish you are! How slow you are to believe everything the prophets said! Was it not necessary for the Messiah to suffer these things and then to enter his glory? And Jesus explained to them what was said about himself in all the scriptures, beginning with the books of Moses and the writings of all the prophets. As they came near the village to which they were going, Jesus acted as if he were going farther. But they held him back, saying, Stay with us, the day is almost over and it is getting dark. So he went in to stay with them. He sat down to eat with them, took the bread and said the blessing. Then he broke the bread and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him, but he disappeared from their sight. They said to each other, Wasn't it like a fire burning in us when he talked to us on the road and explained the scriptures to us? They got up at once and went back to Jerusalem, where they found the eleven disciples gathered together with the others and saying, The Lord is risen indeed, he has appeared to Simon. The two then explained to them what had happened on the road and how they had recognised the Lord when he broke the bread. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have you ever been disappointed? Everyone has been disappointed at least once. Psychologist David Brent analyzed disappointment in three categories. The first is self-oriented. People who want to treat themselves specially are often disappointed with people. The second is cynical. These are people who are chronically disappointed and are always negative about life. The last is blindness. It means following someone's orders, requests, or intentions without any thinking. The problem here is that it doesn't just end in disappointment. Disappointment further results in negativity, anger, and criticism, which is used as nutrients to produce fruits that harms oneself and others. So why do we become so disappointed to begin with? Disappointment comes when one's desire is broken. After all, the cause of disappointment originates from myself. We are often disappointed in our religious lives. The disappointment most often arises when our expectations and wishes are not fulfilled. And in such circumstances, we are often disappointed with the silent God. 
a disappointed person appears in the text today. Two men were walking on a street with dark expressions. One of them was named Cleopas, while the other remains anonymous. Now at this time, these men were on their way from Jerusalem to Emmaus about seven miles away. However, by the end of this story, their final destination ends up not being Emmaus, but Jerusalem. So what was it that made them turn back to Jerusalem? We will follow this story. Not even a few years back, they traveled along this road with hope. But now, their travels were full of sadness. The reason for this sadness was their loss of hope. All throughout the years, the men put their hope on Jesus. However, when Jesus was crucified on the cross, they were heartbroken. Today's gospel conveys the atmosphere of the time. As they hurried out of Jerusalem and started heading toward Emmaus, a stranger slowly came up to them and began walking with them. The traveler was the risen Jesus Christ, as we know. However, these two disciples did not recognize Jesus at all. Why didn't they recognize Jesus Christ? It is because they were too stubborn in their point of view. Despite hearing the news of the resurrection from the woman, and despite Peter and John confirming that Jesus' tomb is empty, they were too biased in their own point of view. Such evidence can be seen in their conversation. According to Cleopas, Jesus, from his point of view, was a prophet who is good at words and works. And he says continually, we wanted this man to set Israel free. We can see what their broken hope was. They had the expectation that Jesus would be a political messiah who would liberate them for oppression by the Gentiles. It was with this expectation that they have followed the road so far. But then Jesus died on the cross. It was an event that marked the end of the hope for these two disciples, Jesus. He we should not miss one important point that Cleopas says. I hope that we would redeem Israel. I hope. I hope. This is not faith. I hoped and I believed that he would redeem Israel is clearly different. They didn't believe in Jesus as the Savior. They just wanted it. They wished it. And they hoped it. I wish is a very superficial expression. It is a very self-centered expression as well. In their conversation, despite the fact that they had heard the news of the resurrection of Jesus, they stubbornly left for Emmaus while looking at Jesus dying on the cross. It's so different from our wishes. They judged it by themselves. Maybe they were so sad, not because of Jesus' death, but because their hopes have been blown away by the Jesus' death on the cross. In fact, this is not the only story of the disciples. We usually place a lot of hope that ultimately ends with despair. But hopes usually end in disappear, these are hopes that come from wishes, not faith. However, 
the Lord does not leave these disciples, but rather holds them. He gives them new chance to have a new faith. The Lord explains these two disciples the detailed story about Jesus Christ in every Bible, beginning with the writings of Moses and all prophets. After the Lord Jesus Christ resurrected, the Lord shows Thomas the nail marks and spear marks on his hands as proof of his resurrection. So why did he not do this to the two disciples? Why did he instead turn to the Bible? This is because from then on, they would have had to, to gain strength from the word and be renewed through the word. The theme of the Bible is the suffering and glory of Jesus Christ. And the resurrected Jesus Christ is the heart of the Bible. The words of the Bible are all about him. Through the words of the Bible, we can gain new strength, have new visions, dream new hopes, and grow new faith. And through these words, the two disciples realized that Jesus' death was not the end of hope, but the beginning of hope. Finally, they arrived at the village of Emmaus in order to hear more from him. The disciples asked the stranger to stay at their home. This picture is Rembrandt's The Supper at Emmaus, 1648. This painting by Rembrandt gives a very detailed view of the situation of today's reading in the Bible. Look at the two disciples who recognized Jesus when Jesus broke the bread for them. The disciple with his back on the left side of the picture is surprised and covered his mouth with his towel in front. The disciple who is leaning back on the right side of the depicted as if he would rise from their sheets. This scene is part of our worship service. Jesus is with us in an invisible way in the sacrament we do. So the sacrament of holding the bread and praying, breaking, and sharing thanksgiving is a time to recognize that Jesus is with us. By participating in the sacrament, we live in the mystery of Jesus Christ and live in the life of the risen Jesus. The following painting is an oil painting called Emmaus by Father Sigur Quedder. The open Bible in the picture shows Jesus teaching the Bible. The bread and glass of wine on the table and light remaining on it shows that Jesus was with them in an invisible way. The resurrected Jesus was with his disciples through a vivid experience. At the same time, Jesus Christ shows that he is not limited by being out of their sight. This is Emmaus' experience. In the end, Jesus met his disciples in two ways. The first is that Jesus met the disciples through the word. And the other is that Jesus met the disciples through the sacrament. And so they were moved and back to Jerusalem with bright expressions singing the new song to praise the Lord. The resurrected Jesus came to us today through the word and through the worship service. May our heart be warm as we join in this worship through these video streaming clips. May my eyes be brightened and may we know and believe that the risen Jesus is my Savior and Christ. Sometimes we are disappointed that today's situation is different from our expectations, but we must leave this world with our faith, 
not with our expectations through the world, through the worship. I believe that we must live in this pandemic situation today with the belief that the resurrected Jesus will never forsake or leave us. I pray that we live a life in harmony with the risen Christ every day. Amen. I'd like to ask you now to join together in prayer. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for you are gracious. You have loved us from the beginning of time and remembered us when we were in trouble. We thank you, O God, for you came to us in Jesus Christ, who has redeemed the world and saved us from our sins. We thank you, O God, for you sent us your Holy Spirit to comfort us and to lead us into all truth. Almighty and everlasting God, by your Spirit, the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified. Receive our supplications and prayers, which we offer before you, for all members of your holy church, for all who are suffering for the economic shortage due to the pandemic situation that in our vocation and ministry. We may truly and devotedly serve you through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. God, we thank you for the world of sacred space. We believe that every space in the sacred ground was of your creation, O oh God. We believe that you are always there before us. You are always there beside us. You will walk the way ahead of us. Bless this sacred ground of the world where we live and walk. We pray that you will be with our friends who are in deep sorrow from their losses due to any natural disasters, especially coronaviruses in this time. Please keep them in your love and grace. We pray for those who are poor, those who are hungry, in need of employment, homes, or education. We pray for the dying who face the final mystery. May they enjoy light and life intensely. Keep dignity and greet death unafraid, believing in your love. Bless us, Lord, we pray so that we will be many blessings to your world through the resurrected Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. For this reason, we pray as Christ has taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trials and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, power, and glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Jesus 
is wonderful and Jesus makes wonderful us to meet again today. Go forward in response to the Lord through the word, through the sacrament, and go to the world holding on to the Lord's promises, not just wishes. With faith, our faith is stronger than death. Grace of the Christ attends you. The love of God surrounds you. The Holy Spirit keeps you this day and forever. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of Christ. Amen.